that we see in County of Honolulu, prosecuting the attorney's office? Um, we'll try to summarize here. We're, we have worked very closely with the Department of Public Safety in the development of the system, something we've worked on for over 10 years. We do think that ultimately incorporating the family court um, juvenile case into the system would be essential to making sure to begin the, to eat the process of equalizing the rights of victims of juveniles with those who are victimized by adults. Um, we do think that the current uh, Chapter 801B does contemplate and provide for this, but it's not clear enough and appears sometimes to be in conflict with other provisions. So we know in our testimony that we think that um, probably an amendment to um, HRS section 571-84.6 would provide for those circumstances under which the um, proceedings and records of minor law made violators are not confidential to include all information relevant to the notification of crime victims as provided for in chapter 801B. Think that would begin to, to clarify. Right now, um, I think it's fair to say that our, our victims in our juvenile cases do not receive the same notification services to others um, because of these ambiguities. At one point in time, we had a, a written working agreement with the family court in regard to this process um, that expired some time ago, and currently um, it's very difficult for us to get the proper authorization to release some of this information. So we think some greater guidance to the court as well as ourselves that would allow us to um, to do this type of notification would be helpful. It would allow us to be a little bit more effective until such a system as described in this bill takes place. And um, we understand the limitations in terms of trying to get this part of the automated system online, but we will commit as we, have, as we do. In fact, I'm actually on call um, um, after hours and weekends 24-7 to take the call from the Department of Public Safety on their releases and we make ourselves available to do the same thing for juveniles until the automated system is up and running. So we're, we stand ready to work with this measure. And, uh, I understand that there may not be the resources right now as well as the um, reference to the public safety about 90 new funds now, but I think this measure as well as um, I believe we referenced the other House Bill 335 dealing with automated notification systems Keeping these vehicles alive um, until next year when we're really going to need them, I think, would be important. And that's really our main objective, not necessarily to move forward right now because we realize the funding is tight. I, I, I want to note your comments, President it is, and I appreciate it. And this is a very important for all um, the board of size. Thank you very much, Dennis, for your country to come. Thank you. Uh, next, I have a testimony from the Reverend Daniel Paul de Blasio. I don't see any uh, new evidence, but he provided testimony in support of House Bill 1788. Uh, next, I've got testimony from Derek Carter. She also provided testimony in support of this measure. Anyone else wishing to speak on House Bill 1788? Yes. Aloha Chair members, good morning. My name is Tom Berg. I am on vacation time. There is no conflict with the author of this bill. And uh, you're from? I am from the Ebba Beach community. You're, uh, you're with, Tom Berg is with Rep. Pine's office, but the chair will note that there is no conflict. He is on vacation time. It's fine to accept testimony from Mr. Berg. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. The, um, the Ebba Neighborhood Board, uh, upon a case whereby a 15-year-old had murdered a resident of Ebba Beach, was of such magnitude and importance that the Ebba Neighborhood Board had unanimously uh, supported that the minor be tried as an adult. What this bill does, 1788, is if we just heard the previous testimony, 1788 provides clarity and a mechanism of a vehicle for you legislators to provide for that clarity. Right now, the tools needed, for instance, if the, if the person who committed the murder on Karen and Trail in Ever Beach was not waived and was not tried as an adult, the current system has it is that when this individual who committed the murder is released at 18. We don't know where this murderer is. We don't know where the murderer goes. We don't know if they're going to be your neighbor. And we don't know when to get out. 1788 takes a heinous crime 
of first degree, second degree, sexual offense, manslaughter, and assault, and kidnapping. We're not talking about stealing Twinkies out of a 7-Eleven. We're talking about major, heinous crimes that the public at large, right now when, when Karen Trail was murdered, she was to be a witness. And as to be a witness, she came forward to do her due diligence. This bill protects the citizenry, whereby that due diligence does get the parameters of that notification system. It is absolutely necessary in our society. It is for the greater good of protection of the role of government. And I am not here representing the Evan Neighborhood Board, but merely as a member, strongly urge your consideration to massage this measure through in the process so that, again, the testimony before me was most poignant. Clarity is lacking. This bill would give you, Chair, and your members of your committee that ability to provide that clarity and security for the community at large that at this time does not have that clarity. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Anyone else wish to speak on House Bill 1788? Uh, members, any questions? Yeah, we're okay. Thank you again very much.